Well, good morning. Welcome to First United Church, our first Sunday in May, the first day of May. And uh, of course, we're coming together to celebrate in a wonderful Holy Communion service today with one another as we also welcome in another month in our year, moving right along. Blink and April was over, so. Well, we always take time in the beginning for words of announcements or welcome. Of course, we have uh, some announcements to make here, but does anyone there, uh, whether you're online or as part of the community, have an announcement to make? I'm guessing someone from UCWA would like to probably make an announcement. That their rummage sale is this week. Okay, I guess I'll have to make the announcement for them. The UCWA rummage sale is this week, so Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, I believe it's all day, right? And then Thursday, it's the 9 to 1. Uh, 9 to 2, sorry. Why? Well, you trust me to make the announcement, and this is what happens. <laughs> so uh, please do come out and support our rummage sale. Uh, thank you for all of the people who have donated things. And speaking of that, this is the Sunday that directly following the worship service, we help carry everything out and set it on the tables. And so all of the stuff is back in the designated room right now. And after the worship service today, we will carry it out and put it on the tables. All right. Other announcements to share this morning? Uh, the, your, please submit your articles for the May Uniter. They're due today. And also, team leaders, um, your report for the annual reports are due next Sunday, please. May 8th. Yes. And next Sunday, for all of the fathers and children out there, is Mother's Day. So we will celebrate that as well. Good reminder for uh, all of us there. Other words of welcome or announcements to share this morning as we gather together. Certainly because we are having Holy Communion today, I want to uh, let those know online that if you have bread and cup prepared, that we'll be sharing in that later on in the service. Back by Renee in the back, though, I'm going to point everyone's attention to Renee in the back because she lifted this up. We have sign-up sheets out on that table. One is the sign-up sheet that she's holding up right now, which is for the twins trip that we have coming up on June 26th. So it's the last Sunday in June. And uh, the total cost for the trip, which includes a ticket and a bus ride, <clears throat> round trip, depending on your behavior, it's $40. So a uh, round trip, ticket to the Twins game, and a seat to watch our Twins, which are turning things around and starting to turn things on, which is exciting, is $40, and that's at the end of June. Again, if cost is prohibiting you from doing that, please come see us in the office. We have anonymous donors that are willing to help people get people to take those fun trips. Um, and so we want to sign up as many as possible. We have 60 slots on the sign up sheet right now, and I hope we surpass that because then we can reserve another bus and just keep filling it up and filling it up. So the other sign up sheet that Renee is holding up now is for fellowship volunteers. We uh, operate our fellowship time on a volunteer basis. And so if you enjoy having fellowship and meeting with one another after the service and you're like hey this is something maybe i could do that's the sign up sheet back there for that it's super simple the only thing that is quote unquote required is coffee and water or juice so anything else you bring uh is certainly up to you and you know you could even have a sunday say like today where we are blessed with cake from keith manbeck's funeral yesterday and so thanks to the uh, Tepley Manbeck family, we have cake uh, to share in today and continue to enjoy that as we go forward. So sign-up sheet back there is for that. We have May is looking pretty good, but June doesn't have anyone signed up yet, I don't believe, nor July, nor August. So let's fill that up. That fellowship sign-up sheet reminds me that today, because we will be helping the set up for the rummage sale. Fellowship is right next door here in the Fireside Hall. Perhaps you saw it on your way in, but if you didn't, all you have to do is just go right over here and you can't miss it. So uh, fellowship time in the Fireside Hall today. 
All right. Lots of words of welcome and announcements. Did I spur any on in anyone out there? Then my last uh, word of welcome and announcement would be to thank Maxine for being here on the piano today, Diana for singing for us, Rose and Ayla training in behind the camera system today with Amanda back there as well, and of course for all of the volunteers you met as you were welcomed and ushered in today, thank you for all we do to make this a welcoming church. Now, let us take this moment of reflection to prepare and center ourselves for worship. Let us now rise as we are able in mind, body, or spirit and join in our call to worship together. Our call to worship is inspired by Psalm 30. Come, let us worship our God who has raised us, has healed us, has remembered us. We sing praises to God and give thanks to God's holy name. By God's grace we are strengthened like the mountains and saved from the emptiness of death. Through Christ our Savior, all our mourning has turned to dancing, all our grief into gladness. Our lips cannot possibly be still, nor our voices be silent. Alleluia! All glory be to God. And let us now join in our prayer of invocation together. Holy God, the earth is full of your glory. Be present with us as we worship you today. Our hearts are on fire with the awareness that Christ is with us always. Our fears have been calmed by the promise of the resurrection. Yes, blessed Savior, we pray for you to never leave us. Instead, fill us continually with the assurances of your love that we could find hope and joy in our world, comfort and peace within one another and be a beacon of your love, shining by the light of the risen Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is See the Morning Sun Ascending. It's in your Methodist hymnal number 674. See the Morning Sun Ascending.
Please be seated. With all the signs of new life in Christ around us, we still cling to our old ways. Let us confess now of our sins as we pray together when we do not accept as our brothers or sisters those who are different from us. Forgive us, O God. When we turn from the path which Jesus taught by gossiping about our neighbor, denying the stranger, or sowing seeds of discord among family and friend, forgive us, O God. When we willfully disobey you and lose faith in your future, forgive us, O God. For all these sins and those that go unmentioned, we pray for restoration and renewal in your merciful arms. Just as the resurrected Jesus rose from the ashes of death, so too let us die to our sinful ways and live anew in your gracious love. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance. Take heart. God empowers us with the free will to move toward our Savior. When we repent and confess, we are forgiven and freed to live a new life. May we flourish in forgiveness and share God's joyful love, forgiving as we have been forgiven, loving as we have been so deeply loved. Amen. With hearts now in full in worship and confessed, it's a moment for us to share in God's peace. A reminder as we go around and share in God's peace to be respectful of other people and how they would like to share peace. And so if you extend a hand or want to give a hug and someone wants to just be reserved, please respect that space. If you are irrespectful in your space and people come, just be respectful that they might want to share peace with you. And let us indeed share peace with those afar in our prayers of peace as we come together here, but worship in all spaces. This is us sharing of God's peace.
And as we come back from our time of peace, of course, a prayer of peace for all those joining us from afar. Our scripture readings this morning will be read by Gary. Thank you, Gary. Our first reading this morning is from Acts 9, verses 1 through 19. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues, synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were opened, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus called Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tar Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and his, he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who evoke, invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument who I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. The second reading is from Revelations, chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures, and the elders, they numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of th and thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing, to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped.
Well, now it's time for our children's message, so I'd like to invite the children up or those who are young at heart. Good morning. You're the first one here. You want to hang on to that then? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. You want to pass it down so we can get another good morning? Good morning. All right. Hey, there we go. I have a joke for you all today, all right? And if you've heard it before, please just play along, okay? Because sometimes we've already heard the jokes that even, you know, pastors might tell. All right? So I have a few questions for you first, though. Do you know who I am? Tony. Tony. Logan, I'm the pastor here. Now you know me, right? So now you know who I am, right? I know that already. Okay. Will you know it in a week? Yes. Will you know it in a month? Yes. Will you know it in a year? Yes. Maybe. Will you know it years and years from now? You'll know my name. Maybe yes. not. Logan. Yeah, Logan's like. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, then I have a very important question. Knock, knock. Kitty. Well, I thought you just said you knew me. Ah, oh, doors open. See, now they're trying to think of, like, how can we answer that without Tony. making it into a joke, huh? But that's kind of a funny thing to say, right? Because you go through this process, you're like, of course I know you, of course I know you. And then you say, knock, knock, and the, the automatic response, right, Logan? Who's there, right? Yeah. Well, the good, part, the good fun that we're having here with this joke brings me to get to just share in just a simple and easy, but yet so instrumental to our faith message that when we talk about knowing our God, God knows each and every one of us, right? And God is not ever going to forget us in a week, is God? Yes. What? Yes. God's going to forget you in a week? Yes. No, no, God is not going to forget you in a week. Is God going to forget you in a month? No. No. Is God going to forget you in a year? No. Is God going to forget you in 10 years? No. Even after you've long forgotten me, Logan, is no. God going to forget you? No. Is God going to forget you in 100 years? No. In a million years? No. God is never going to forget us. And so when we go and when we knock on the door and God says knock, knock, and we answer, we know who's there, right? God. It's not a who's there question. It's a who's there statement. God is there. Amen? Amen? Amen. So this is just an important way for us to be reminded that God always knows our names. God is always with us. And thanks to Jesus, God is always there. That was a pretty easy children's message today, wasn't it? And then I gave you a joke that you can now go tell your friends and family, right? I got another joke for you all. All right, we'll hear it after church, okay? Why don't we join in prayer? Here. Let, uh, you guys all have jokes. The kids are going to have lots of jokes for everyone after the church service now. Should, we just, should I just sit down and you guys tell jokes for the sermon? Does that sound like a good idea? Congregation might like that. Let's pray. Blessed God, thank you for the laughter and fun that jokes bring us, that children bring us, that spontaneity can bring us. And thank you most of all, God, that you indeed never forget us. No matter how long, no matter how far, no matter where we are or what we are or who we are, you know us. And we pray all of these things through Christ our Savior, and in whose name we pray all things. Amen. Thanks, children. How about a round of applause for our children today? And I expect to hear some jokes after church then. Our second hymn today is Listen to Your Savior Call. It's from the New Century Hymnal number 250, so the words will be on your screen. But listen to your Savior Call. to your 
Our gospel reading today comes from the book of John, chapter 21, verses 4 through 6 and 9 through 19. Hear these words of Jesus. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know it was him. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Well, cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it because there were so many fish. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he had been raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And Peter said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hand, and someone else will take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And after Jesus, after he had said this to him, Jesus said, follow me. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. Blessed God, indeed, we love you. Open our hearts and our ears to all that you have for us today. And may all that we do bring you glory. Amen. <clears throat> Who are we? Seems like a pretty obvious question. Anyone who looked in the mirror this morning probably knows who they are, or hopefully you woke up knowing without having to look in a mirror. But who are we is our question for today, and it's an interesting question and a very important question for us to ask. 
You know, in our, some of our denominational sayings, one of the kind of messages that I absolutely hold dear and love is this saying that says, no matter who you are or where you are, you are welcome here. No matter who you are or where you are, you are welcome here. And it's so important to hear those words, especially as we come to join in a church, because the question of who we are can have myriad answers. It can be lots of people on lots of different journeys. Let's just talk about our scriptures for today, each one of these pictures being a representation of our scriptures. We could be Saul on a journey We could be a person who had spent our entire lifetime thinking we knew what was right, thinking we did what was right, thinking our way was perhaps the best way. We have one of those great sayings, right, in our colloquialisms, that person's way is the highway, right? My way or the highway. Saul was this kind of person. Saul was dead set knowing that it should be this one way or nothing else. So much so that Saul persecuted the fellow, his fellow Jews, persecuted who we would become known as, as Christians. Maybe you're Ananias. Maybe that's where your journey has you right now. Maybe you're a person who is so devoted to the Christian faith that you're willing, when the Lord calls out your name, to say, I am here. What do you need me for? Where am I on this journey? What is it that I can possibly be of service to? So much so that if the Lord would call you to do something that seemed exactly opposite, you might say, yes, Lord. You know, but you might want to know, this person does persecute people, but yes, Lord, I will go and follow. Maybe you are the disciples, Simon, Peter, and John, out in the boat fishing because you just don't know what else to do but to get away, to escape, to flee, to go find comfort in something that you find comforting. And yet when Jesus calls, when Jesus' miracles appear, you're willing to drop everything and follow. Or maybe we're like, this scene from Revelations where the four corners of the earth come and worship this lamb, the lamb that was slain for us, the lamb which is represented by this table. You see, this is an important question to ask us, who are we? Who are we? Because we can be at any point along the road in this journey. And it brings an even deeper question to say, who are we that God would love us? Who are we that God would welcome us? Who are we that God would share his life, sacrifice Jesus' life for us? Because let's walk back through. Saul, who persecuted Christians, was still saved by Christ. Think about that. Think about the number one person that you can think about. I'm not going to name names up here because we all have the people that we think are like numero uh, number one enemy, right? Think about that person being converted and then God calling you to be Ananias for them, to baptize them, to bring them to the light, to bring them to a different truth, a better truth, a truth full of love. Who are we that we could be called by God and loved by God, that God would come and share a table with us, invite us to breakfast, break bread and share fish with us. Don't worry, we don't have fish here today. That Christ would welcome us and love us. 
The truth is that we are who we are because that is who God created us to be and who God calls us to be in each and every one of these moments. And that there is no further distance beyond the ends of the earth that we could run that God cannot find us. There is no form of disbelief greater than what Peter did, and yet God still comes and calls him. You remember in our passage today, that in our gospel passage today, that Christ asks Peter three times, do you love me? And the reason that Christ asks him three times, do you love me, is because Peter denied Christ three times before the crucifixion. Jesus is offering Peter each step of forgiveness and grace. Jesus offered Saul the greatest gift of forgiveness and grace. Jesus used Ananias to demonstrate that no matter what we are, no matter who we are, no matter where we are, we can offer other people forgiveness and grace. And we are all called from the ends of the earth, from the four corners represented by that picture, to find that grace here. What greater love is there than this? What greater love is there that we could ask ourselves a question of who are we, and God would answer, mine. What greater love is this that we could ask a question, who are we, and God could tell us no matter who you are, no matter where you are, you are welcome here. What greater love is this than Christ laying down his life for us and sharing breakfast? with us. So, indeed, just like the children's message, a message that you have heard a thousand times over about Christ's love, a message you have heard a thousand times over hearing the story of Saul on the road to Damascus, a message you have heard a thousand times over about the nets full of fish so full they couldn't haul them in, a story you have heard a thousand times over that this table is an open table of welcome and gift of grace and love for you. And yet, so important for us to remember and to forever hold on to. Who are we? It doesn't matter who we are. Where are we? It doesn't matter where we are. We are God's beloved children. Amen. Will you please pray with me? God, we come here today and we hear the familiar story of Saul's conversion, of Ananias' faith, of the forgiveness of Peter, of your grace-filled sacrifice, that you would appear and ask us to follow you. God, we long to follow you. We long to follow wherever you would lead us. We long to be yours, that you would call us to be so much more. And yet you call us, God, to be just who we are no matter where we are, no matter what we are, no matter the journey or step of the journey that we are on, you call us. And yes, you long for us to be close. Yes, you long for us to love you. Yes, you would long for us to turn towards you and worship you in all glory and faith and holiness, like the four corners of the earth coming and worshiping you, God, in this great story from Revelation, you long for us. But God, we oftentimes walk away or stray or are too weak or weary or don't feel like we are worthy of being called at all. And in those moments, we need you.
We need these reminders. We need these stories that have been shared and passed down for millennia upon millennia. That you, God, have been, are, and always will be. That you are the eternal and everything with us in every moment, guiding us in every step along every part of our way. And so thank you, God, that you would call us as Saul, that you would fill us as Ananias, that you would forgive us as Peter, and that you would help us to praise you in eternal glory from the four corners of our earth. Of course, God, we do bring prayers of our community, prayers that we would like to lift up and share. So now we offer those prayers to you. Are there prayers in our community today? Well, then let's join in silent prayer and ask God to reach all those places where words cannot. And let all God's people say, Amen. We now come to Holy Communion. Holy Communion in our church is an open invitation. This table is open to all who wish to dine, regardless of age, regardless of creed, regardless of whether you are a long-time member here or just walked in off the street today, this table is open to you because this is Christ's table and Christ does not deny the salvation or the grace or the love to anyone. Let us now join in a communion prayer. We give you thanks, almighty and eternal God. We give you thanks, Jesus Christ, light of our world. We give you thanks, Holy Spirit, breath of life, through whom exist all things that have come, are, and ever will be. At this table and in these Easter days, we are reminded how your resurrection brought us eternal life. We are reminded how your great love for us came and provided us grace. And we are reminded just how precious life is, how fleeting life can be, and how you have conquered death itself. Blessings be to you, O God, that you took on flesh in the form of Jesus Christ to show us the truth, the life, and the way. And as we come to your table where we break bread and drink cup with you yet again, we praise you for the reconciling forgiveness which your sacrifice guaranteed. Hear us as we lift our voices high, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth praise you, O God Most High. Amen. Let us now join also in singing our Lord's Prayer song.
salvation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus met with the disciples in the upper room. And at that meal, he took the bread that was being shared and he broke it, sharing it with the disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat of this and do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, At the very same meal, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine and poured it out for each of the disciples. And in sharing it with them, he said, this is the cup of the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. Take and drink of this and do so in remembrance of me. When we eat of this bread, when we drink of this cup, we once again covenant with our God that Christ lived, Christ died, Christ was resurrected and Christ will come again. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come upon this meal, this table, and consecrate this most holy and blessed bread and cup to our bodies. May this simple yet so significant meal fill us, repair us, renew us, enliven us, and strengthen us to face each moment of each day that we would know that since we have been invited here, that we indeed are your beloved, that you know us by name, you'd never forget us, and that no matter how far we could stray, you are always calling us to be near. Thank you for this holy sacrifice and for loving us so deeply as to invite us once more. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you, take and eat of it and do so in remembrance of him. The blood of the new covenant poured out for you, take and drink of it and do so in remembrance of Christ Jesus. In just a moment, I'm going to call the ushers forward, and we'll have everyone, as they are able, come up to take communion. If you are not able, that's fine. We will also bring it to you. But it's been a while since we have done communion this way, and last time we did it, there was some confusion as to how we should do it. And so, even this most holy of ceremonies still needs instruction from time to time. So when you come up, you will see the first tray that you will encounter will be bread. You will take the bread of Christ and you will eat it right away. The next station you come to, you may still be eating the bread, it's okay, will be the cups that are in individual cups like this. Take and drink of the blood of the new covenant poured out for you right there. And then place it back in. This is how we remain as contactless as can be and yet also engaged as can be. This is Holy Communion. Will the ushers please come forward?
And I now invite everyone to come forward as you feel called, for all has been prepared.
the gift of our Savior, the simplicity and splendor of this most holy moment. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's sacrifice. And strengthen our faith to share your good news with the world, that you would increase our love for one another, so all may receive your hope, joy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. It's now time for us to have our holy offering, so I will let the Sunday school students go. Mary Lou, if you want to raise your hand, that's who you'll be following off to Sunday school, and have a wonderful time. I mean, I don't know how it gets better than this here, but they'll figure a way out. They'll figure a way out. <laughs> and it allows us to take a moment and share in holy offering. Again, we have the trays set out around the sanctuary so that we can deposit what monies we may have brought if you have brought those in. But holy offering is also a time for us to sit in prayer and to be thankful and ask God, indeed, where are you calling us? Who are you calling us to be? It's a moment for us to also answer and God calls and say, here I am, Lord. And so if you are feeling those things, experiencing those things, praying those things today, the impact that will have on this world is truly an offering as well. This is Holy Offering. And let us now rise again as we are able in mind, body, or spirit and join in our doxology together. Oh, 
Let's join in our prayer of dedication, again printed in the bulletin or on your screen. God, who calls each and every one of us, we give today according to how we are able. Our plates present the outpourings of the gifts you have given us, our hearts the overflowing love you have shared with us, our hands and feet the patience and grace you offered us. So accept what we bring and bless all we offer. In the name of all that is holy, amen. Our closing hymn today is Jesus Calls Us in the Methodist hymnal number 398, or words on your screen. This is Jesus Calls Us. So before we close today, just a reminder that we will be carrying things out of the room that's just off the hallway over here, out and just setting it on the tables where we're directed. For those who cannot do that, we have fellowship already set up. Certainly go and enjoy fellowship, and when we're done, we'll come and join you. So we'll have a good time fellowshipping together. But let us indeed now go in the peace and grace that Christ calls each of us by name. Christ knows each and every one of us. Christ has not even welcomed us to this table, but asks us to share this table, that we would go forth indeed, loving our world as God loved us, and sharing in that peace that this table brings, that we are called to share with the world. Go in this promise. Go in that peace. Go in God's grace. Amen. Have a great week, everyone.